This screencast covers the materials in Module 4, Lesson 10, and this is based upon the homework. Uh, these problems are, are difficult, so I'm going to give uh, you a second screencast. The first one covers the practice test, or practice set, rather, and solves the problems for you. You might want to look at that as well. This one is going to try to point you in the right direction when it comes to doing your homework. Okay, we're going to skip right over to number two here. And number two tells us to circle the expressions that give the same product as 6 times 3 eighths. Explain how you know. The easiest thing to do is to begin with the initial expression. And that is 6 times 3 eighths. And we're just going to work through solving this problem. And it's going to give us a number of steps that we can compare uh, with as we solve each one of these individual expressions. So that's the same as 6 times 3 over 8. And then we get 20, or excuse me, we get 18 eighths. And we could go a step further if we want to change that into a mixed number. It's not really necessary, but I'll do it for you. And that becomes 2 and 2 eighths, and that is the same as 2 and 1 fourth. So what we're going to do here is start working these expressions one at a time. Now, do we need to solve them? In most cases, no. At some point, we're going to get to something that's similar to one of these steps that we see in the problem here. Once you get to a step where you have something identical to one of these, uh, you know that it is equal to or has the same product as 6 times 6 and 3 eighths. Another hint, when we divide, turn them into fractions. So immediately try to turn these into fractions as soon as possible. Uh, think about your commutative property. And again, start to solve these. But once you have something that looks like one of these, you can stop short of solving. And then again, circle the expressions that have the same product. Okay, let's look at uh, some of these. Number three, I, I can't work them out for you. Again, look at the other screencast based upon the uh, practice set. But I am going to talk about some tape diagrams here to get you started. So what do we have? Well, let's read it. I have 1 eighth the sum of 23 and 17. We think about the sum of that, we want to kind of think about uh, maybe some parentheses here, okay? There's one clue for you. Another clue is the tape diagram. So we're going to do the sum of 23 and 17. That would be the whole. And we're going to get one eighth of that. We should know that in terms of our tape diagrams, we're going to have to partition that into eight equal parts, and we want to find one of them. Let's look at B. Subtract 4 from 1 sixth of 42. We got that. Now we want to subtract 4 from that. Some of the kids make the mistake of saying 4 minus, okay, 1 sixth of 42. But that's not the way it goes. Uh, don't necessarily rely on the word order, because we're going to take this and we're going to subtract 4 from that. Remember that of tells us that we're multiplying. Get used to that. You're going to see a lot of it in the future. On to the next one. It says 7 times as much as the sum of 1 third and uh, 4 fifths. Again, we want to, when you see that, we want to think in parentheses. And we know what the sum means. At least we should. So I'm going to take this, and uh, whatever I have, whatever the sum is of, of these two numbers, I'm going to have to have seven copies of it. So I don't know the whole, but I do know the part. The part is the sum of one-third and four-fifths. Two-thirds the product of three-eighths and sixteen. Again, what do we want to think? We want to kind of think of our parentheses here. I probably better put that a little further out. Two thirds the product of two thirds.
words are the product of. Okay, there's my hint to you. Uh, we want to find the product of 3 eighths and 16 first. And when we have that 2 thirds of, again, I told you that, that means uh, we're going to multiply by the fraction. 7 copies of the sum of 8 fifths and 4. Again, we don't know the whole. And partition that into 7 equal parts. And what do we have here? Well, this is where we're going to put the sum of 8 fifths and 4. I hope that model gives you a hand with that. Again, we want to use their parentheses there. 15 times as much as 1 fifth of 12. Again, 1 fifth of 12. And we want 15 times that amount. I think those are uh, adequate clues without totally giving everything away. And we want to foster some independence. But again, you can take uh, these clues and combine them with what you see in the screencast uh, for the problem set where they're all worked out. And that should give you a hand with this. Okay, one last section. We want to find... Uh, we want to solve these inequalities here, and when we do that, uh, they tell us to do it without calculating and explain your thinking. Well, I'm not going to write out the thinking, and you don't either, but if you do some partial uh, work here, you can use some math and a few expressions. They will be adequate in my class for an explanation. Uh, the first thing you want to do is look at both sides of the inequality, and we can see that we have two-thirds times something. So that means all we have to do is compare these parts of the expression. This one's simple. Okay, that's given. We can calculate this without much trouble. And we need to compare the two factors, as it is, um, being multiplied by two-thirds. Okay, once again, we see here that these parts of the expression are the same. So we need to look at this part of the expression to make our comparison. This one's a little bit more complicated. But what I recommend is that you simplify the parts in parentheses first and give some thought as to which one would be greater than the other. Of course, this 32 sixteenths is easily translated into a whole number. You might want to do that as well. Uh, not too difficult, but again, do some thinking. You don't have to solve these.